Welcome to worship on this day. We're so glad you have joined us. My name is Pastor Ann. And I'm Pastor Bill. We want to thank you for your patience last week. While I had a couple of days off to renew, I am refreshed and ready to go. I want to invite you into this time of worship, beginning with the call to worship. Have you heard God's call in your life? We're, We're not, not sure. sure. Sometimes, Sometimes we, we think, think we know what God wants us to do. do. But other, other times, times it is, is not, not as clear. clear. Place your trust in the Lord. God is with you always. Lord, Lord it, it is, is a scary, scary thing to do to just place our trust, trust in, in you. God is constantly being revealed to you often in surprising ways. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God, God who, who always watches, watches over us and guides us. us. Amen. We'd like to have a few moments for our young people. And today I brought a box and I'm going to show it to you a little bit. There's also a picture of something that's inside of this box, but I wanted to show you that how this fits inside. Oh, thank you, Bill, how this fits inside this box. This was a present that somebody gave to me. It is a cross and it's a little bit different looking than some of the crosses that I already have. Um, sometimes a gift is something that you know you want for a long time and sometimes a gift is something you never knew was there and somebody gives it to you and it's something that you learn about. And this is a cross that I really appreciate. It's a cross that we don't see a lot of times in our churches because it has Jesus' body as the cross or on the cross. You might be able to notice in the close-up picture, can you see Jesus' head in the middle of the cross? Can you see Jesus' arms that are outstretched as, as the um, wide part of the cross? And Jesus... Jesus' body is um, on the cross, um, the rest of the cross. Um, when I th think about this cross, it's very special, a special one to me because it's a picture of Jesus suffering. And we know that Jesus um, had a lot of experience in it experiences in his life. Sometimes he was celebrating with people. Sometimes he was bringing, helping sick people feel well. And we remember that this time when Jesus was on the cross, he knew what it was like to be hurt in his body. The other thing that really makes me think about the cross and about Jesus' life is the way that the cross has its shape. Some people think about the up and down part of the cross as Jesus' love for God and Jesus showing who God is. And the other part of the cross where Jesus has his arms out is the part where we think of how Jesus showed his love for the whole world and for all people and all creation and his love for us. So Jesus loved God and he loved the world. And so many things are are special about the cross. That's why we call it a symbol. It helps us to think of all of those um, big, big ideas about God that say something to us our whole life. Do you have a cross or maybe a few different kind of crosses at your house? Um, it's been neat to see the different crosses that people have. If you would like to take a picture of the cross that is in your house, and tell us a little bit about it, about its story. Was it a gift from somebody that somebody gave to you? Um, what, what about that gift is special to you or that the reason why you received that gift? Um, let us know if you have a chance and would like to take, take a look this week. Um, so just a lot of things to think about, I know, but um, I'm glad that you were putting on your thinking caps with us today. And before we um, end our young and spirit time, we've used our minds. We also want to use our spirit. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for all of your reminders of Jesus' life and his love, his love of you and his love of us. 
Help us, oh God, to stand up for you and for your peace and for your justice. Help us also to be people who are peace builders and bridge builders in our world. We pray in Jesus' name because he cared about all these things. Amen. <laughs> our scripture reading today comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. It's the story some of us are familiar with of Moses and the burning bush. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. May God add to the blessing and hearing of this holy word. Amen. I was a squirmy child. <laughs> I would squirm in pews and in seats at school and in many other places where I was. And church was one place where I learned to quiet myself. It was not easy. I was also a talkative child. <laughs> I know. None of you are surprised. <laughs> Anne is not surprised. But I was hushed many times because even my whispering voice would carry rather loudly through the room. My mother would invent activities for me to do to help me learn to be quiet. Bill, why don't you color in every letter O in the bulletin with this pencil? Or, Bill, why don't you underline words in the bulletin that you like? Or, Bill, why don't you silently count how many times the pastor says God or Jesus or church? So on and so on. It was an important part of my growing up that I learned how to quiet myself. 
We learn today that God knows how to be still and listen. God hears the cries of the Israelites in slavery. He says to Moses, I know how they are hurting. I want to take them out of Egypt and send them back to the land they came from. And Moses, I am sending you to lead them out. Then God, the God we worship is a liberating God one who longs for abundant life for all creatures, a God who desires humankind grow in unity, hope, and joy. But it is so easy to become overwhelmed by all the noise. The important noises begin to swirl around with the trivial ones until none of them stand out above the rest. We sometimes find ourselves becoming numb to the reality that some noise is a whisper of God's voice from a cloud or a crackle of God's voice from a burning flame, filled with a call for us. Some noise is seeking to speak to us, to our hearts, so listening and discerning are important. Listening to ourselves and to God. Moses is a man at the bottom when we meet him today, a murderer on the run, caring for his father-in-law's sheep, and he encounters God on Mount Horeb, surprisingly a name that means wasteland. But God invites Moses to feel this wasteland beneath his own toes and tells him it's holy ground. That may be the first liberating news in this story. God's presence and action through a burning bush, changing a weapon into a garden instrument, or transforming a cross and an empty grave into new life. God is able to redeem the ordinary, the disgraceful, and make them holy. This holy moment foreshadows the grace God wants to restore for Moses And even more so, the grace God wants to restore for the suffering slaves in Egypt. This encounter leads God to call Moses to confront Pharaoh and tell him in the powerful words of that old spiritual, Let my people go. Through this story, we learn God's name. I am who I am, or I will be who I will be. It is a witness to a God who is going to be active and present in the history of real people and real lives, redeeming the lives of rogues and those who have made mistakes, liberating exploited persons and groups, and judging kingdoms which survive to oppress, attack, demean, and dehumanize. But this gift that God gives, listening, genuine, deep, honest, listening. It is where today's story begins as God hears the cries of those slaves and as Moses hears the crackling of that burning bush. With all the noises in our world, it can be easy to forget the point of faith, the point of life, the point of discipleship. So we learn to discern because some noises stand out and become spiritual signs, like this burning bush. A colleague writes, Just before the birth of Jesus, the world was noisy. Maybe no more noisy than usual, but very noisy. Elsewhere, Everywhere there were wars, mainly over religion. There was hunger and disease widespread. The poor were becoming poorer. And some who thought they had found God acted like they had no idea who God was. Mental illness and other illnesses were stigmatized as demon possession. Evil ran rampant. And then you mix in some earthquakes, floods, and a plague now and then. And you have a chaotic, noisy, first century or any century world in despair. But the answer God gives is a baby. God, God's answer to noise induced despair and numbness. The answer to this spiritual starvation is simple. It is more life. Life is the point. 
When there seems no point, life points to life. And life points to love, which fulfills those most basic human drives and needs. Life and love, of course, of course, then point us back to God. The one who deeply appeals to us to grow in unity and grace, hope, and goodness for all. The God who calls us to listen deeply wants us to liberate and be liberated from all the false noises. We can so easily be consumed by these noises, but thankfully, God shows us how to listen to what is really important. Cries for abundant life, longings for love, and the new songs of salvation we need. To listen to how special you are and how God is constantly instilling in you the great potential to love. To hear God tell us we count. Every single one counts. Because love means believing in each other. A youth minister whose stories I've been reading lately tells about one of the young men in his youth group, Kurt. He was a magnificent musician, poet, artist, and philosopher. Rarely had that minister seen such gifts in someone so young. And for a long time, those gifts lay dormant. Kurt rarely played or painted or wrote or allowed anyone to experience his wisdom. He was Kurt, the nice guy who did not do or say very much. In his junior year, Kurt fell in love with Kelly. Kelly was a spectacular young woman, a math whiz, and a potential concert pianist with a big heart. Kelly did not just love Kurt. She believed in him. She affirmed him. She critiqued him. She embraced him with grace. Suddenly, Kurt was creating music. He wrote a magnificent collection of songs and joined a fairly well-known local band. His poetry was published in the school literary magazine and entered in a few contests. His artwork sold and he gave a powerful address as valedictorian after gaining entrance into Juilliard. We know God loves us because we know God believes in each of us. And when we struggle to believe in each other, God's faith in us allows us to begin again to believe in each other, affirm each other, desire abundant life for one another. Having someone believe in us helps bring out our best. It inspires and it motivates. It creates courage, confidence, and conviction. And God has an endless oceans of this kind of grace. A grace that helps us listen for what's real in the midst of the noise. A grace that rekindles the call to liberate ourselves and others. A grace that pours forth abundant, a God who pours forth abundant grace that inspires instead of consumes. May our lives practice listening to God. May our lives encourage liberation. And may our lives lift up thanks and praise to a God of abundant grace who never fails to believe in us and never doubts that we can and will believe in each other. Amen. Let us join our hearts and minds in a time of prayer. Holy One, we turn our hearts and minds to you. We are here because of Jesus, the peacemaker and the bridge builder, the same one who overturned the tables in the temple courts, who protested the hypocrisy of his own community. Oh Lord, it has never been easy to be a Christian. We who claim Jesus' name this day need to humbly recognize our limitations and our own imperfections. O oh God, you do not lead up, leave us to ourselves. 
Your word is what gives us reason to hope. For in any situation that humanity faces, from the long struggle for truth and reconciliation, from self-destructive violence, your spirit has and will continue to work upon us, O oh God. We plead with you to undo all that we worship and adore, which is not your will for us. We pray for our churches to be workshops of grace and also of challenge. Holy One, help our elders to listen and celebrate the gifts of our youth. At the same time, bring our youth to greater understanding of the gifts that belong to the mature wisdom warriors among us. O oh God, help us not to take anyone for granted in your blessed community. Let your church be witnesses to the world of your redeeming and transforming love. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. We always hope and pray that this time of worship will be a blessing and that as you bring that blessing into your home, into your life, into your world, God's Spirit will multiply all of those blessings to bring our communities, our homes, our spirits into places of grace and love and peace and justice. Let us, as we go forth, offer the words of Jesus as he teaches us the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen.